one of my most difficult and time-consuming projects so far has been my attempt at producing textiles when I attempted to make a full suit. Having fallen a bit short on a few articles of that wardrobe, since then I've wanted to narrow in and focus on a single item of clothing with a goal of growing everything locally to produce a printed t-shirt. For that, I've grown my own cotton a bit further north than it's usually done, but now I need to transform this fiber into an actual t-shirt. For that, I'll actually require some specialized tools to actually do it well. So I enlisted the help of Pete, a professor at the University of Minnesota who's experienced with electronics to try and build me an electric spinning wheel. And with Annalise, who's been helping us out as an intern behind the scenes and has experience with weaving, who designed a custom loom for my needs. First up, the electric spinning wheel. Previously, I learned how to spin using a manual wheel when making my suit, but this has a couple issues. First, I don't have access to the same wheel anymore, and buying a new one can be pretty expensive. But an electric spinning wheel can actually be pretty cheaply made. Second, spinning a fiber that's short, like cotton, requires a faster spinning wheel than the one I used before anyways. When you're spinning cotton, it needs to be spun very tightly. You need lots and lots of twists per inch. Something that's pretty easy to achieve with an electric wheel. And lastly, as still a novice spinner, having a machine that can take care of the spinning motion for you makes it a lot easier for me to learn the skill of spinning on it. So with that challenge, I set Pete off to get things started. I'm Pete Marchetto. I'm an assistant professor at the University of Minnesota and I also run Dr. Pete's Fix-It Shop. I've got a list of things for Andy that we're going to try and find here at Axeman. Great surplus store that we've got in the Twin Cities area. Quite a sight to behold. Come on in. Some of the first things that we'll need will be a motor and a power supply. So I found a power supply here. This is a 41 watt, 12 volts, and this will do exactly what we need. Now we move on to motors, and what we want is a reversible DC motor. That's going to require us to have a motor that can handle 12 volts forward and 12 volts backward. And then our motor controller is going to be capable of doing that reversal for us. May have to do a little bit of work on the shaft here, but it looks like we may have our thing. Manufactured in 1989. Small pulley's already on the motor. Now we need a large pulley. We found this pulley. Not exactly what we need, but we can make it what we need. Well, there you go. This is exactly what we need. I think I know what we're getting. I think I've got everything we need. Let's head to the workshop. I just got back from Axeman and I've got all these components. Hopefully we'll be able to make a fully working electric spinning wheel out of it. The main thing that we've got here is our motor. Uh, this is a small 9.5 volt DC motor. Now we actually need a spindle. For our purposes, we're going to be using a wooden dowel. We've got a nice little silicone rubber band right here that's designed actually to be a motor belt. And so this will go around the motor on one side and be tensioned. And then on the other side, we'll have one of the two wheel ends of the spindle, and that will be driving the rest of the spindle. Okay, gotta set that torque a little bit lower so I don't break my wrist. Some people say I'm eccentric, but I think I'm perfectly coaxial. No, Mr. Motor, I expect you to spin. Have the spindle in place with two keepers here and here which are going to act as our bushings as well. I have put this block in place for us to try to mount the motor on. I'm gonna have to do a little bit more adjustment here and probably also saw the block down to size a little bit. Right. This is a uh, power supply, so we're going from AC 120 volts down to 12 volts DC. The other thing is that this allows us to introduce relays in there to both control the direction of the motor and on and off. This here is what we call the stompy stompy. And then on the speed side, uh, we do have an Arduino that we can use with this um, potentiometer to control the speed of this. All right, so we're gonna solder on the common pin first. This is a TRS connector known as that because it's tip ring sleeve. So we are going to connect the red wire to the tip, brown wire to the sleeve, and the orange wire to the ring, the center portion. In our case, the signal for these two, which is going to be the reverse signal, is gonna be tied together between here and here. So I need to connect the two of these on the back. So I'll do that using a piece of wire. Then on this one over here, this is our go relay, and that will be connected there as whether or not the thing is running. Here comes the real test. So I'm going to turn on power. This turns on power to the power supply. Then what I'm doing is through the foot pedal, this is our reverse action. 
So that triggers these two relays. And this is forward, our go button. And then if we want to go in reverse, then we trigger both buttons or both parts of the foot switch at the exact same time. We're good. So thanks to Pete, he's able to make the mostly electronic parts. So we have a device that spins and then to actually spin the thread and wind it up on the bobbin is, uh, took a little bit of extra little tweaking. So I 3D printed this little bobbin here just to hold it and uh, that's hollow in the middle so it's able to go on top of this dowel. And then you have a drive band and a tension knob here that allows you to slow it down to the desired speed. And that kind of determines how quickly it'll be sucking in the thread as it spins. Then from there, it's kind of just a matter of figuring out the best speed, the right amount of tension, just getting the hang of it, and learning how to spin again. It's been a while since I've done it, and uh, one of the things I struggled with was getting a constant motion to it. It's something that I'm sure once you're experienced with it, it's pretty easy, but I always struggled with that. So that's why I'm glad to have the electric spinning wheel where it's just a press of a button, and then it's good to go. So I'm just gonna practice some of this wool and then move on to the cotton for my t-shirt. Next up, the loom. I used a few different looms before with my suit, but they were either difficult to get access to or produced a wide weave that wouldn't be ideal for printing on. So Annalise came up with their own design and built one for me. Spread out in front of me is all of the parts of the loom I designed. For the sides, I took two wood panels, 12 inches by 24 inches, at least an inch thick, and I cut these into rough sleigh shapes. These are the sides of the loom and they hold all of these rods through here. For the rods, I used two one and three fourth inch dowels cut to 30 inches long. One will be the cloth beam and one will be the warp beam. They're what you roll the warp onto and then as you weave, you unroll it and then roll it up on the cloth beam. Then took two one and a half inch dowels, also cut to 30 inches long, and these were used for tension on the loom. And then two half inch dowels cut to 29 and a half inches long. These are the two apron rods. The way you tie onto the loom, you don't actually tie directly onto the rod, you'll tie onto these, which get held onto that by these strings. And they just are there to help keep tension even. This is going to be the beater. Once the loom is warped, it's what you put through and run down to pack the threads together. For the shuttle, I took a piece of wood that is about 18 inches long by one inch and fairly light and thin. I cut notches into the end of this to hold all of the thread on. The shuttle is where you wrap all the thread on and you use it to pass back and forth for the weft of the weaving. This is the heddle, and it's actually what you will put the warp threads through, and it lifts and drops to the warp thread so that you can run the shuttle through the loom. Because we're trying to make a cotton fabric that's pretty tightly woven to be able to print on, it needed to be really dense, which means I need a lot of little like slots and eyes per like inch of space. The idea I came up with to DIY the heddle was to use zip ties as the held. Because they are really thin, easily accessible, and I could just glue them in a row in a big piece of wood, like a big comb. To make the heddle, I used two 30 inch pieces of wood and carved out a groove along the center line of each side of the wood, stopping about an inch from the ends of each side. So I started with zip ties just like this, uh, the thinnest I could get, and then I snipped the ends off so that they were flat and of a pretty uniform size. Then I used a tiny little dremel bit to drill these tiny little eyes in the center of them. I wanted them to be a little longer than they were. I just took the same zip ties like from the same batch, cut them in half, and then glued half of them to each end. So they end up double the size, but it still keeps the eye in the middle of the zip tie. You want these about as level as they can be. I then took the altered zip ties that I had punched the hole through the middle of and hot glued them into the grooves on the boards, making sure there was a small gap left in between each zip tie for the thread to go to. The heddle is held together with two small wooden dowels on either end, and the other end of the zip ties are tucked into and glued into the groove on the other square dowel of wood. So let's put it all together. The warp beam and the cloth beam, both at midpoint and a couple of inches in, have little screws. The thread that you loop around to hold the apron bar, it holds that thread in place so that it doesn't slide around on the bar. The apron rods also have small nails in them at the same points as the cloth beam and the warp beam. To make sure these don't go anywhere, I'm gonna put on the washers and the wing nuts. Okay, so now what's important is that these ones can rotate and these ones do not. I'm gonna put in the little baseboards. Now we can attach the apron rods to either side. They're held on to the cloth and the warp beams with six identical strings knotted into a loop. So now the apron rod can hang over like that. Now we have both apron rods on. This side will be the warp beam. So this will be the side I tied one side of the warp to. And then as I weave over here, 
It'll get rolled up onto this beam as cloth, like this. So now let's start warping it. So then to actually weave on it, the first step is to actually warp it. Mm -hmm. Warp threads are basically the ones that go lengthwise down the bolt of fabric, and the weft threads will be the ones that go back and cross, and those are the ones that you actually make with the shuttle. So that's the actual weaving portion. So you're going to rest these top bars of it. The next part is pretty easy, just highly repetitive. What we're going to do is we're going to tie onto the apron rod here. What we're basically going to do is run a bunch of loops through every spot in between the eyes. We're not going to worry about the eyes right now. Thanks to Annalise and Pete, I should now have all the tools I need to turn my cotton fiber into some actual cloth. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to subscribe and check out other content we have covering a wide variety of topics. Also, if you've enjoyed these series, consider supporting us on Patreon. We are largely a fan-funded channel and depend on the support of our viewers in order to keep our series going. Thanks for watching.